Those mirrors have played an important role here at one of the last surviving outposts of the Apollo space mission. This is the McDonald Observatory, four hours' drive from El Paso. We've arranged to meet up with veteran Apollo scientist Peter Shalus. This is one of the photographs which shows this reflector package. Yeah. This is a set of mirrors which are very specially constructed, so any incoming ray of light gets reflected exactly back. The reflector on the moon is really only about 18 inches square, not very much larger than this photograph. You can see some of the footprints. You can see a sandwich bag <laughs> left on the surface. I don't think that was anybody's lunch. The mirrors left on the moon allow Peter to make a very accurate measurement. Using a telescope with a built-in laser, Peter can precisely measure the distance from the Earth to the Moon. We orient the telescope so that it is facing the Moon. The laser light coming out of the telescope then goes directly up to the Moon. It can be reflected by the reflector and it then comes right back through the tube again, makes its way through the optics, and we sense it inside the building. OK, there it is. <laughs> Look at that. There's a really big crater. You can see the shadow in it. Timing how long it takes the laser beam to go out and bounce back. Peter can precisely calculate the distance to the moon. But trying to hit that tiny mirror so far away requires very careful alignment and a bit of perseverance. We may send out a thousand million billion photons, whereas coming back, coming back into the telescope might be 10, 10. or five or none. <laughs> so it is still a very hard experiment because everything has to work just right. How accurately can you make that measurement off Neil and Buzzy's reflector and back again? One to three centimeters. <laughs> Over a quarter of a million miles. Over a quarter of a million miles out, a quarter of a million miles back. By taking accurate measurements of the distance between the Earth and the Moon, day after day, year after year, for nearly four decades. An incredibly precise map of the Moon's orbit has been produced. But the results have thrown up something very odd. The actual orbit of the Moon is different to that predicted by Newton. It turns out that simple Newton's laws of gravity really don't answer all of the questions. For the data that existed, it was good. Newton really had a good formula. But as we get better and better data, we find that that's not exactly right. 